And we're back with you, still discussing the topic of fibroids. And Danielle Beckford is about to share her story, her experience with fibroids, rather. So, completely different story from completely Denise. Completely different story from um, Denise. I told you about the initial parts, about all the bleeding and all of that. Um, I went to the doctor, and he said, I told him that, doctor, um, I'm getting all the symptoms that before the medication that I was on for the past however long, clearly it's not working anymore because remember they told me it was polycystic ovaries mm -hmm. and he's like well probably need to do another ultrasound and see what's going on with the ovaries we did the ultrasound and uh, we could not see the ovaries because they were so big they were there were seven fibroids that was just blocking everything because they were huge but i could tell that something was different because like um denny's i'm not a trainer but i was going to the gym you know i'm all about my fit yes. farm and my boot camp and i'm running up and down and i'm fit and i'm like why everywhere else getting small i'm a belly just now go down though i'm a belly now go down so and then leading up closer to the time when i was going to do the operation before i knew i was going to do the operation simple things in boot camp i couldn't do things i could do before touch, touch my toe yeah <laughs> Strap up my shoe. <laughs> <laughs> Things like that I just couldn't do before. And if I if I laid on on my back, I could just feel something protruding on my belly. I'd feel it and it's tough. I could feel it. Uh, one of my other doctor friends, she suggested Dr. Ryan Halsall, and he has been extremely excellent. Mm -hmm. On September seventh, I did my operation. There, it was like. 15 of them, not seven. Wow. Because there were some small ones too. Wow. But those big ones, you know, I put them on Facebook so you saw them. So yes, you Denise that's does not want to see them, but I'm going to send them to her phone. <laughs> I'm joking. And um, they're out and everything is absolutely fabulous. I haven't really changed my diet as much as Denise. Mm -hmm. I was never really a meat lover before. I eat fish, I eat chicken, I love vegetables. Um, I'm not on a regime. I just try to control my weight. Even though you know, vegetarians and meat lovers alike mm -hmm. suffer from fibroids. It is a fact that fibroids feed on protein. Yeah, they like protein. And it don't matter if your protein coming from fle flesh um, or coming from beans, beans. Or, or green leafies, but it they feeds feed on, on it. it. So mm -hmm. be careful. So vegetarians will be confused about, hey, you know, I'm I eat only vegetarian, vegetables, but, but there's, protein, in there's beans. protein in the veggies that we eat as well. Mm -hmm. So be careful with that yeah but i i go by the law that everybody's body is different, different. everybody's spirituality is, is di different yes. and yeah. different things heal different people yes we all should make it your point of duty your obligation in life to know your body yes you can't depend on doctors and your friends yeah. who are experts and who are brighter than you and whatever, whatever. You must know you. You must know, you know your yourself. body. And yeah. don't make anybody tell you about your body. Take the time to know yourself. And so when you get these options from the doctors, you need to assess them based on what you know of yes. yourself. Yes. Removing the womb. Oh man, don't get me started. Like I've, I've been hearing a lot of stories about that particular surgery. Doctors, doctors seem to think that, is, that go to that as their first option. And let me tell you something, as a black woman, as a woman, as a child of God, everything must go back to father the way they mm -hmm. put it in there, like everything, right? I mean, I take out nothing, I hmm, them say never, say never, but I believe that there are options, and I, I think it is wrong that doctors push this hysterectomy as, as your first option. There are other things you can do. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, um, hysterectomy could never be my first option. At that stage in your life? At that stage in my no life. No kids but yet. But if I have the requisite amount of children and it needs to come out for whatever reason. Oh, you're not know. attached to your womb. Girl, I'm attached to mine. Kicking and screaming, <laughs> leaving alone. Leave I just need womb. my requisite amount of children. <laughs> Anything that bothers me, Sadiqa, if it, if it can go and I can still live, I'm good. Mm, uh, why mm. not? Mm. We'll play against that day. Let, oh, Jesus. Let's talk about how this affects families now. Because oh you do gosh. mention that you have to walk with your overnight bag and mm -hmm. everything that is happening to you. But what about the family aspect of it? Earlier, I was told it can be painful for sexual intercourse in a lot of relationships. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's listen to Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Daniel, tell us about that. Well, families, look, before I get to the sex, but families, everybody has to look out for you. And sometimes you feel like a burden. 
because everybody knows that this is happening to you. Then he's mentioned the overnight bag. You always have things in your car. Every time you're supposed to go to the bathroom, I have to tell my best friend, come with me now, because I don't know what I'm going buck up on in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. I always have panty and all sorts of things all around. And when you're in a relationship, the person that you're in a relationship with, they have to deal with that as well, because there's a protracted period of time where you can't have sex. The person will get frustrated, and you can't blame the person. Mm -hmm. They want sex. You're in a relationship. You agreed to this type of relationship. So that creates a burden sometimes. So it, to have a great support system is always very good. And then sometimes, Sadiqa, even when the sex start, certain things you just can't do. You just, it's not, no, it's not going to work. Well, you know, there's some things I can't comment on. <laughs> but what I will say is that my thing is different from her. See where she did hers in community? I did mine alone. Oh. I did mine because alone. Of what? Because of your personality. Because of steer good, Sadiqa. Because of steer good. It's not pride. I have no pride. I'm strong. Mm. I can deal with this. Okay, this is happening. Right, I need to do one, two, three to sort it out. So I was dealing with my thing alone, and I never have the issue of you know having a partner in my life and it causing an issue and all that kind of thing, whatever. Because by the time it's not the wrong one that, that did mash me up, you know. It's really the wrong two, wrong which was two. after surgery. Right. You understand? The wrong one. I could I could travel with my bag all day long. I could carry my change of clothes to work, and when I'm out of uniform at work, and I'd say to my boss, situation is like no problem and whatever. I mean, I can deal with it. But it's the wrong two that was the issue, which was why. Just going to prayer with it. My, me and my community of the Holy Spirit. That's it. That was me. But would you have done anything differently how you Oh, yes. It? Absolutely. Um, first of all, I would not have done surgery in the United States. Mm -hmm. I would have done it here. Because I don't think the North American doctors get that it is a black woman's disease. And they don't understand that. Well, I did say to my doctor straight, the one in, in, in the States, like, Jamaican women do not remove their wombs. We like our <laughs> wombs where it is, and we don't want to separate from mm -hmm. it. So just take your eye off my womb and let us go to your, your plan B, which is really my plan A. And I definitely would have gone into the inner chamber before, before you know, the doctor thing and the find my own healing thing, whatever. But Father Duffy said, Natalie Barnes, God bless you, love you to death, girl, um, who said to me, find your own healing. And I recognized where my healing was in Jesus Christ. So I just dealt with it. But it took me long. I had to go through the thing for much years. You know what I mean? All the pain. I mean, there were some days when, when I had pain. I didn't have pain every single day that I had it. But when I did have pain, like, I cannot move. I, like, I, like, no part of my body could physically move. Mm -hmm. Now I'm in a place where I don't even take supplements. I don't put no pill in my mouth. There is no pill, no capsule, no drink. No portion <laughs> that go in my mouth. What I do different, I think that over the years when I started to get back the symptoms after I was on the medication for polycystic ovaries, I realized that it was changing, but I was so clutching onto this medication saying, yes, it's mm. been working for a while. Let me not let I it think maybe go. Maybe the mind wanted to work. Yeah, mm. the mind wanted it to work, but I would have definitely changed that. I would have done my ultrasound sooner before they became mm. grapefruits and melons. Dana and I are different. Mine came back aggressively within six months, even with a change of diet. There are some women who will have them orange seed or them grape seed or them grape for 6, 10, 12 years and it never moved from there. Mine not only grew exponential, whatever that word is, that word, in numbers, yeah. but also in size. It was aggressive and it was fast. Some women, because, and here's what the thing was that blew me away. When I was here in Jamaica, it wasn't bothering me, it was growing at a snail's pace. Two mm. years after I migrated, Oof. my girl. To, not only in numbers but in size, and then six months after I did the surgery, took out all of them. That never made no sense. And I wasn't eating meat. I wasn't. I changed everything. I was eating beans. I was eating greens. If it not have no color, me not eat it. Me not eat out a can. Me not eat out a bottle. Nothing on a shelf that can stay for a day. Me not eat. Ugh. But what do you say to women now battling this this oh. condition? Well, I'm going to start with know yourself. Know what's happening yes. to you. Yes. Don't be in denial to say, oh, every woman have it, or it's just hormones, or mm. we just a bleed. We bleed something. No. Or it's a family thing. Or it's a family away. thing. No. Mm -hmm. Know yourself and I, I want you to have options. So mm -hmm. go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. Know what the doctor say. Mm -hmm. But you should also get other options. There mm -hmm. are naturalists out there. There are persons like Denise out there. But you need to know your options. And then when you know all your options, you say to yourself, what is good for me based on what I know about my mm -hmm. body? And then you make a decision. Um, what I want to say to ladies, like Dania said, 
Ladies, know yourself. It is important that you know your bodies. Stop having other persons tell you their expertise on your bodies. Okay? It's your body. Know it. Get in, in, get in touch and in control with yourself and what is happening. Make notes if you have to. I tell my clients, keep little journals. This belongs to you. When I put this in my mouth, what happens? I feel this thing on the side of my stomach. You know what I mean? I feel a little nauseous. When Dana had her thing for, for, for 90 days, she passed out. I didn't pass out. When they took my blood pressure, my girl was like, um, Miss Hannah, are you feeling okay? Because I don't understand why you're not in a coma. Because your <laughs> blood pressure is so low. I'm like, girl, I feel good. What? Do some burpees and whatever. I was like that. But my, my strength was coming from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Right? I had no business walking around, doing jobs, being, having conversations. No, know yourself. Over? Yes, <laughs> Miss Shuda did drop over. So ladies, God provided the medical expertise there. Use it up. But also channel yourself in a direction that you're instructed in. Um, it's going to take medical knowledge, and it's going to take spiritual knowledge. It's going to take some alone time knowledge. Mm -hmm. just, just get there and know yourself and stop, stop messing around. And this procrastination thing that we have yeah. when things are happening to our bodies, we pay attention to our families first and our jobs first, and we're not taking the time to, to pay attention to ourselves and to, to find our recovery. And call any of these ladies reach out to them on facebook rather dana is always on facebook for always. some little counseling and advice and <laughs> what next step to take thank you so much ladies for being on our show this week i really hope the conversation will continue all throughout because it it's a really critical issues that we're facing as women and i'm hope and and i pray that we would have inspired someone today thank you for tuning in i am sadiqa diaram pleasant viewing Everybody, everybody get ready. Everybody, everybody get ready. Everybody, everybody get ready. Everybody. It's Sadika to the world. Sadika to the universe. Never the best, never the worst. Sadika to the universe. So get ready for the show. Sadika Daram show. Get ready for the show. Sadika Daram show. Read it, Rupin, come now. Hey, Sadika Daram show. Ready for the show. Hashtag. The Sadiqa Diaram Show was brought to you by Campari, a taste of things to come. Must be 18 years and older to drink. Drink responsibly.